Hi, I'm Shelly Sprofsky, a training advisory guru with the Great West Division, and I'm thrilled to share with you some of our top tips for successful ceremonies. Number one, begin with the end in mind. What emotion is it that you want your relayers to have? Do you want them excited? Do you want them sad? Do you want them crying? Do you want them cheering? Every decision that you make about your ceremonies should have that very goal in mind. Number two, start on time. When you have cancer survivors who are in treatment, every minute that you wait to start your ceremonies is a minute that takes their energy from their victory lap. Respect their journey and don't be late. Start it on time. Number three, keep it short and impactful. While we're talking about time, it's a good time to think about 15 minutes is a great opening ceremonies target. 15 minutes, speakers through, feet on the track. For Luminaria, you have a little bit more time. 20 minutes is a great target for your Luminaria before the feet start circling the track in silence. Use your time wisely and really use the speakers that will convey the emotional experience that you're looking for. Number four, know who you want to be part of it. Chances are everybody's gonna wanna add someone to the mix. Do you have a great speaker who's got a really powerful, heartfelt story to share? Yes, they'd be perfect. Your mayor? Maybe, if they've had a good experience or a challenging or a personal experience with cancer and your town likes him or her. Your sister's cousin's friend's aunt who once thought about cancer and they're on the logistics committee? Probably not. This is your chance to make sure that every message you deliver is on target. So don't feel bad about not accepting every request or honoring everyone's request to be included in the ceremonies. The fact is, is that you can't make everyone happy. So just remember, the main focus is the main focus. When you keep the main thing the main thing, that's when you're gonna come out with success. Number five, use emotion. This is your chance to touch your relayers' hearts. And when you touch them on that heart level, you'll keep them forever. So use this to challenge your speakers to be able to share from their own heart about their own experiences. If they wanna be able to have a strong story, give them the chance to be able to speak powerfully. Challenge them to do that. If it's sad or if it's a part that's hurt in their life, give them a chance to open up and let them know it's okay to cry, to tear up. We all know that the best part about Relay is you're surrounded by incredible people who will feel that emotion with you. And if we don't help create that emotion for them by giving the speakers the chance to share it, then we miss out on that opportunity. A few do's and don'ts on using emotion. One, make sure that the message fits the speaker. If you have a child getting up there to share their story, don't feed them the words. Let them share from their heart about their experience. If you have someone who's had a difficult time, rehearse it with them ahead of time so they're comfortable. And when they get to the points that are hard, they know that they can open up to this group. And if you've got a group that really wants to rally around your survivor speaker, challenge them to really speak out and be strong in what they're saying to get people to round that track with the biggest, greatest cheers you could possibly imagine. Number six. Pick dynamic speakers for your ceremonies. I know I sound like a broken record and I've said this a couple times before, but when you begin with the end in mind and you know the emotion that you want to convey, choose speakers who can help fit that bill. Don't be afraid to sit down with them. Go over a list of things and say, these are the bullet points that we're looking for. We want you to be inspirational. We want you to share your story, share from your heart. We want you to hit on how the American Cancer Society has helped you in your journey or we want you to share about what you're going to do now that you're fighting back. All these different things, do not be afraid to break it down with them ahead of time because the more confident you are in sharing that with them, the more confident they'll be in sharing their story. And the more dynamic they are, the better your ceremonies will be. Number seven, keep it simple. Keep the main thing the main thing. Focus on whatever emotion it is during that particular ceremony and run with it. Do you want your speakers to give a rallying cry and challenge your survivors to take a strong first lap? Get the crowd cheering? 
that's what you want to go for. Is it a heartfelt tribute to someone that they've lost during your Luminaria? Focus on that. And finally, when you're fighting back in your fight back ceremony, are you rallying the troops and charging them to go forth and create amazing, awesome ways that they're fighting back? This is your chance to do it. So just focus on that. Number eight, practice. What do I mean when I say practice? I mean, actually rehearse the words coming out of everyone's mouths. Take some time, walk through it with your MC, with your sound guy, with your speakers, so that all the transitions between songs and speaking and all the movement happens together at the right time and everyone's comfortable. I promise you, your speakers will try to get out of the rehearsals. They don't want to mess it up by doing it ahead of time or letting anybody hear their story. But you know what? I would prefer, if I was going to practice, to practice in front of a dozen people instead of messing up in front of hundreds or thousands of people down the line. The more time you take in preparing a good quality ceremony, the better off you're going to be. Number nine, use the crowd. This is your best chance because we know that all relayers bleed purple and are willing to do pretty much whatever it takes for a great experience. During the survivor's lap, have your MC send the crowd out to surround the track with cheering so that every step your survivors take is surrounded by support. During Luminaria, really encourage your relayers to walk in silence, to feel the emotion and experience of what's going on. And when you hit that fight back ceremony, find your most loudest, craziest, rallying person to just pick up that red fight back sail and round the track with everybody behind cheering them on. This is your chance to use the crowd. Don't miss it. Number 10, recognize those who are important in the fight during their particular ceremonies. At opening ceremonies, you'll obviously want to honor your survivors. Maybe take a moment to honor your caregivers. At Luminaria, recognizing and remembering those we've lost. It's really important to note that we don't have to do it by individual name. We can honor them collectively as a whole, together, because we're all relayers together. Now you might wonder, what should we do with recognizing our committee and our sponsors? How do we squeeze that in? My recommendation would be not to try to squeeze it into one of your major ones, but to take time to recognize them throughout the relay or at another special time where you can honor all of them together. I hope that you found these 10 tips useful and helpful if you, as you start planning your ceremonies for this year's Relay for Life. As we are part of the American Cancer Society in this year's 100th birthday year, there is no greater time to polish up your ceremonies and really deliver an experience that your relayers will never forget. I can't wait to see what your ceremonies are like as I join you this year and we relay to finish the fight. Good luck.